Good morning. Can't really see me. Thanks to the direction of the sun. Let's have a coffee chat. You ready? I won't be here long because I'm sitting right in the sun and it's hot. Looking for my shade so I can see y'all. My other shades that allow me to read clearly. Mm -hmm. Just stopped by Starbucks. Got me a little whatever they call this. Starbucks do not be giving what y'all say sometimes. <laughs> it's hot. It's a toasted white mocha iced coffee. I just wanted to do something. And they had it inside of my star uh my Target. I really made a Target one. Got some cute little socks. They in the back. I'll probably break my arm trying to reach them. Say hey when you come in the room. Say hello. I just felt like going live. I haven't been live in a minute, minute. Um, and wanted to say hello. Hi, Coach Alexis Taylor. How are you? I'm trying like to let y'all see me but not be in the sun. Is that possible? <laughs> And then I don't know if I can move my little phone thingy. But um, yeah, I just jumped on to chat. How are you? How's business? You say I'm a woman of few words in my message, girl. Sometimes that's all I got is an emoji, honey. Like they say, if you can't uh say nothing, just wave your hand. That was my waved hand this morning. This light is bothering me. It be bothering me when my Facebook light don't be right. Because I be trying to reuse these videos. Come on, Facebook, work with me. So my coach encouraged me. Shouts out to my coach, too, because she be praying and prophesying her booty off. So she encouraged me to do more coffee chats, um, which just, you know, lets me sit with you guys, see what you need, see what you need to know. Oh, I got a, a sale today, Alexis. I'm so proud of this. I got a new tumbler, Starbucks tumbler. It was supposed to be $15. I got it for nine something. I didn't know it till I checked the receipt. Yes, sale. My birthday is Saturday, so I feel like everything that I'm getting a hookup on is because it's my birthday. So that's my birthday sale. <laughs> One of many. <laughs> I'm not chatting about anything in particular. What, what do you want to chat about? Throw a topic out. Let's chat. What questions you got about coaching, becoming a coach? Let me get my lips right. Because I can feel they right before they start cracking and that hurts. So yeah, um, no agenda. I got up this morning, took a shower, realized I had to come to the chiropractor, so I did that. Still haven't had breakfast yet, so I really left the house for food like I always do <laughs> if, if I haven't went grocery shopping yet. So I just got adjusted and it's right down from my Target. So I usually can make a Target run by pre-ordering and then just going to pick up. But um. I couldn't link my Target card. It was weird. So I just felt like I should go in. And I was like, oh, yeah, they do have a Starbucks. So I stopped there. Um, Target's customer service is so friendly. They showed me how to link my card. So that helped. Oh, I need to go to the library. I got a lot of library books. So I got to turn back in. I had ordered these books by Martha Beck, who also trains coaches. But I realized they're so thick that I can only make it through one at a time. So I'm going to return them and read what I can. And then, you know, if I need to check them out again or order them just to have them on my shelf for whenever I'm ready to pick them up, I'm going to do that. So they look pretty interesting. I used to read her column in Oprah Magazine years ago. And um, never really knew that what she did was life coaching. <laughs> And I forgot how I recently found out. I think somebody may have brought her up and I looked up her books and ended up checking out like seven of them. I'm like, you cannot read seven books at one time. So, I have to choose. Um, and then what I'm really loving is audiobooks. So, I'm going to stay in my lane with this, okay? She says, I'm at work, this job. <laughs> Sorry, but I know. Yeah, it's about that's what we talked about in the coaching clinic uh, this weekend, which we had such a great time. Like, I start to miss y'all's faces when I don't see you. So we got a chance to talk with Coach Sonia. Coach Dina and I had just talked on um, Zoom on her podcast episode, which has 100 views in less than a week, by the way. I was like, go, Coach Dina. Um, 
Who else was there that's one of our coaches? Uh, I don't know. Coach Alexis, you got a couple of them that you got to meet. Everybody's begging for retreats. So I am working on a virtual retreat. I don't have any plans to do anything in person anytime soon. Just because Corona is still a thing. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's where we are. So, yeah, it, I want to do something towards the end of the year. I'm working through the plan now. We'll see. Because this weekend, we were supposed to do half a day. It was supposed to be four hours. We was there for six hours. So I was there for six hours. I ain't going to speak for here. Because some people came early. Some people stayed late. But I that recording said six plus hours when I got the, the download. And we had such a great time. I know I start missing the Ladies of Legacy too, girl. Like, yeah. So it's time for me to see all y'all's faces on screen. I think the last time we did a big on screen, according to um, something I just seen in like my file folder, it was like top of this year. So we're going to have to do something to wrap it up. Um, I really, my goal two years ago for us this time this year was to be here live in Atlanta at my favorite vegan spot. They have this bougie buffet. And I just was like, this is where me and my ladies are gonna be the end of the year retreat. Child, Corona shut that restaurant down ahead too, thank God. So the other weekend I went and had dinner and talked to the owner and just told her how my plans are now, you know, not my plans from two years ago. So I thought that was so interesting. Hello, Coach Carla. How are you? We're just doing a quick coffee chat with my semi-okay Starbucks cup. I think I've become a Dunkin's girl since the Starbucks have been out of everything and shutting down and closing early. And girl, I'm just like, y'all know what? I'll take that birthday reward. But uh, And this ain't even my birthday reward yet. Hello, Charlita Russell. How are you? Charlorita. I read that wrong. Charlorita. How are you, girl? Are you a coach, Charlorita? Drink tea. Oh, so they have this medicine ball that's super good. It's like a peach, green tea, and lemonade. And I make it at home because I've seen how they do it. So I got my tea vana. $5 a thing. That's that Oprah tea. And um, yeah, but you know how it tastes better when somebody else makes it? And somebody else paid for it. So this is one of my <laughs> birthday treats. Uh, so yeah, they, but they didn't have the lemonade to make it. So ended up with an iced coffee, which is what I wanted anyway. But by the time they went on the list of we ain't got this, we ain't got this, we ain't got this, we ain't got this. I was like, what do you have? And give me that. Boo. So yeah, I become Team Dunkin' because Dunkin' Donuts spoil me. I'm there like two, three times a week. I can go in and sit. Like they are the Starbucks of this year for me. The last two years, actually. Because they were the first ones that um, opened up and let us come in and sit. Because uh, I have an accountability partner here in Atlanta that's just like, she is not scared of this virus. She was like, Duncan is open. Let's go get some coffee. I was like, girl, we got to wear a mask and we got to clear up the tables and the chairs and we got to do some hand sanitizer. So she helped bring me down off of death row thinking like, hey, Corona. So Duncan embraced us. And then they opened a brand new one by my house. And I missed the grand opening by one day, getting like, I think like a hundred dollar gift card. I was like, what? nobody told me. So I think I've been trying to redeem myself, but they give me free drinks and um, I really like their selection and they're closer. I was just in this area today. So I became a Starbucks girl. I'm just really waiting on my birthday, uh, my birthday drink. And then I'm be like, I'll see y'all next year, Starbucks. Cause they ain't all that. I should have came on here and asked y'all what to get. But then they probably had it on there. They got a whole chalkboard of stuff they ain't got. I was like, okay. Then I asked the lady, well, what do y'all have? Can you make a recommendation? She was like, well, tell me what you want and I'll tell you if we got. I'm in Atlanta, so we work a little bit different. As my coach Eric says, we're unapologetically black. So that means like we got, like we just black and don't apologize for it. So I have to realize who I'm dealing with. So my bougie side has to die down a little bit. You know, that's the flesh. And let Jesus arise so that I don't respond with like, first of all, you know, pumpkin latte, no espresso, my favorite. I think I need, she said coffee with all the added like neck roll and every, what? How can I help you? Hold on a minute. I'll be like, ooh, 
Praise the Lord. I got Starbucks today. Praise God. You know, you got to find them. Because, <laughs> girl, as soon as you leave the house, honey, this traffic, I have you driving with an attitude. So, yes, honey, all the attitude. So, I didn't even know what I wanted. I knew I wanted some coffee mugs. So, I found me. You missed my little... I didn't even know this was on sale. So that was my way of God saying, good job, daughter. Because this is my little tumbler I just got. It's supposed to be like 15 bucks, but it rung up for nine something. And I didn't know it until I got in the car. And I said, thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, that was his reward for me not responding the wrong way this morning. So, right, go to this and say, we're not apologizing. Eric had to show me that, that Atlanta black people... Are different than like west coast black people and i see it now <laughs> i've never seen it till i moved to this side of atlanta because where i'm from in the country we still kind of reserve like what tupac what prophet tupac say i ain't no killer but don't push me child but over here girl you be right there on the edge of like but you my sister though i gotta love you i can't go off on you it's too early. I didn't plan my day to go this way. I'm going to be the light that you need to see. I may be the only Jesus you see. I have to remember that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah. Carla says, thrifting in Starbucks. So, I have conquered all the thrift stores here. I know when I conquer a thrift store is when I start donating to that store. So if I go thrifting, I'm buying back whatever I've donated over the last few months. They are building a brand new Goodwill down the street. And I just ride by occasionally, see how far they've gotten. Because I didn't see, I didn't read, I get the paper. Like it's in my uh, driveway right now. I get the paper, but I don't read the paper. I get the coupon <laughs> and I put the rest of the paper up. So they probably announced it in the paper. Because uh, this is a small town south of Atlanta. And child, ain't nothing private over here. Um, so I didn't see an announcement. I just rolled by and my eyes got to be like, Goodwill is coming. I love Goodwill because number one, they trained me in business in 2005. And ever since I tried to make sure that when I donate, it goes to them. Or if they ask me to round up, I say yes, if I feel like it, if the spirit has led me. Um, I feel like I'm giving back to what they gave to me that started me in business back in 2005. That's 16 years ago, y'all. And then when I do make donations, they come to your car and get them. And that's just like, yes. And so when I go in, you know, some people complain about the prices being too high and stuff. I just listen to the recording that they play. Thank you for putting people to work. And I remember that was me 16 years ago needing $150 to go through their program. They gave me a scholarship for $100. Because I wouldn't let them give me the whole thing. I wanted to know that I had paid something for this journey. I didn't know where it would lead. But I wanted to be like, yeah, you know, I paid $50 for my first business. Glad. So, yeah, Goodwill is coming. I'm excited because I get to sew back. Because they they still sewing into me. So, yes, we're not apologizing. We'll go thrifting when Goodwill opens. But I imagine. Because I'm over here. This is the side of Atlanta that Black Atlanta considers old money. Um, and so I know that I'm not the only like old lady in spirit that's waiting on this to sort of open. So I imagine it's going to be like packed because everybody that's already been here has probably been, wait been waiting on this goodwill. I'm the new newbie here. Like people, I keep having to tell people that I'm new here. I'm just learning this side of Atlanta. Give me a minute. So yeah. That's what <laughs> so... I say that because the first few days that it opens, it'll probably be busy. <coughs> Target is getting busy too, so I'm going to go in a minute. Because uh, the parking lot was empty. Now people parking beside me. I don't like that. <coughs> um, Buckhead. Let's see. About 20 minutes away. <clears throat> I'm at, on the side of Atlanta near the airport. Buckhead is getting into the suburbs of Atlanta um, with the bougier houses and stuff. That's probably eventually where I'll end up <laughs> in like a penthouse out there someday. I heard it was getting a little ghetto too, but um, that's where our main malls and stuff are is in Buckhead. Um, that's where like the shopping is and stuff. 
shopping and good food. So it's drivable, but depends on traffic. <laughs> but yeah, Buckhead used to be the bougie, bougier side of Atlanta. It's bougie over here, but we bougie on a budget. <laughs> like Starbucks sales. Uh-huh. What y'all got on sale in Starbucks? Uh -huh. And Target. We collect coupons and then go shop. So, yeah, she was visiting someone there at their parents. Yeah, that's where the condos and the high-rises are. They're still building. I was, I passed there because it's a Trader Joe's over there I go to sometimes. Um, so, they're like the healthier eaters. When I feel like eating, like, super bougie, like, a couple days ago, I went through Buckhead, right right through Buckhead. Like I said, getting into the sub suburbs. They have more vegan spots, just fancier dining eateries. Where you'll pay, you know, 40 bucks for breakfast. And that's like avocado toast and coffee, you know. Um, but everybody goes because it's a good selfie spot. Or you can sit on the patio and watch the city, you know. So, yeah, that's Buckhead for you. That's where I go to buy my bras, though. Like, I got on a good bra from the mall in Buckhead. Because <laughs> they believe in, like, higher quality. I actually heard about the store that I get my bras from in Buckhead on Oprah. And Oprah believes in buying, spending like $400 for a pair of pants because it'll last you 10 years, you know. So, yeah, she helped me upgrade my mindset with that. So, my bras are like 100 plus, but child, they can handle these girls. You can take my money. <laughs> so, that's when I go to that area. They have some good yard sales over there, too. I told you, we bougie on a budget, honey. Girl, good bras are so necessary. Growing up, I did not know that, you know. Um, there's a lady at my church that was teaching us to wear two bras. Because we were heavy chested. So, everybody wore two bras. And it worked. Got the job done. But, at some point, I thank God for his deliverance. Because two Walmart bras for $10 don't equal a really good quality $100 bra that you only wear one of. And the girls, it's just like... Girl, you done lost some weight. Girl, I just got on a good bra. Thank you, though, God. That was worth that investment, wasn't it? So, yes. <laughs> so, that's the conversation you and Coach Dean are supposed to be having, Coach Carla. I watched our replay yesterday on 2X Speed. We a mess. A whole trip. Alexa says, can you share a tip with us coaches given the holiday season? I am in... I, I'm going to start with my birthday because that's the first holiday. So my birthday is next Saturday. It is on the 27th. I will be 41 years old. That is my holiday that I plan for in my head all year. And then it gets to like the week of and I'm still like, well, what do I want to do? So um, I had planned two years ago, pre-corona, to spend 2020 birthday at the spa. We have a 24-hour spa. It's really a Korean bathhouse. So everybody is in there naked. And I don't care. We're women. We got the same things. We're going through the same stuff. I seen a white lady with the same type of booty I got. I was like, we're sisters. I ain't looking at your booty. I'm just looking at it like, wait a minute. That's my booty in the shade of white. This is so interesting. You know, I don't normally see naked women. So everybody's looking. Um, but it's so like an experience. The fact that the workers are in there naked. They're cleaning. And they show you. I love Asian culture as far as like how health conscious they are. I love how they eat. I love how you don't really, it, in my experience, I really haven't seen a lot of um, unhealthy or overweight Asians. I'm like, I want to embrace the part of their culture that eats really good and takes care of their skin and just health conscious. So I was watching the workers like, oh, so they make you take three showers. They scrub your body from head to toe. You're paying for all of this, of course. You got acupuncture acupuncture, reflexology, massages, spa, pedicure, food, pool, sauna, hot tub. All of that is in this 24-hour spa. And when the first time I went, it blew me away. And I was like, okay, I need to set my budget higher for next year. That's how I knew I was going to do it on my birthday pre-corona because I was going back. I did the vaginal steam where they cleanse you. And it was just an experience that growing up in the hood, child, we ain't nothing about this. And I remember it was a Saturday night. You could stay for a full 24 hours. You pay to get in like a little club or whatever. And I went to church the next morning. And this lady looked at me. She was like, what's going on with you? Something different. And I was like, girl. And I told her about the whole experience. 
and she is a black older woman from Harlem, New York. And her first, she's her face was like, I ain't finna be walking in front of. See, that's why they want to tell you what was going on with me. And I ain't gonna tell you no more. You ain't gotta worry about it. But if I disappear on a Sunday night, I'm at the spot. <clears throat> so I thought that's what I was doing this year to celebrate the holiday of my birthday. And you got to love yourself and be really comfortable in your own skin to do something like that. And I will try so much stuff just for the sake of the experience. I learned years ago that as you start making money, you're not investing in things. You're investing in experiences. And that's what I wanted to do. And then I told some friends about it. It was like, yeah, we should go. And I was like, girl, I love you. But I don't want to look at you naked. I would rather look at total strangers I'll never see again another day in my life because you can't take phones in there. Ain't no selfies. Ain't no nothing. They catch you at the door. You take off your, your shoes. You change clothes. They give you a whole outfit. Um, and I, it was just a chance for me to be a part. Nobody knew me there. You can spend the night there. And I did. But then I started making a mental list in my head. Okay, next time I need my phone charger. And I need this. They got covers. They got pillows. The floor is heated. It's a whole experience that I was looking forward to. So I was like, okay, I'll set my budget higher um, and be ready to go. And then Corona hit. They didn't shut down, though. They promoted harder on their Facebook pages. They're like, we're clean, and they're super clean. They're always mopping. They're always wiping stuff down. Um, but I just couldn't risk it because it is hundreds of people in there at any time. Men are on one side, women are on one side, and then there's the middle ground. You come together to, like, eat and swim and go to the igloos of... Every igloo is a different temperature. So I like the one that was super cold. But then you have the sauna sweat igloos where you can't even breathe because the steam is in your face. I don't need that because as y'all see, I cough. I be trying to trying to breathe naturally. Okay, somebody asked me the other day, have I ever smoked weed? I was like, child, I try to breathe regular air. What do I need smoke for? So anyway, um, it was an experience. So I thought I was going to do that last year. I thought I was going to do it this year, but I realized I'm not fully over my COVID phobia. So here's what I did know that God had me doing. I had already signed up for a um, year-long membership at my local spa, and I had been going monthly since I moved to this side of Atlanta, because right as I moved a year ago, my back went out, so I signed up for a chiropractor for a year, because my coach owned a, a chiropractor chain up here in Atlanta, but his offices were too far, like, I you're going to be stressed out going and coming back, I'm going to need a whole nother adjustment by the time I get home, so I found a spa that was close, or um chiropractor that was closer a black owned franchise and started going to them right next door is the spa so I signed up for them but then the spa got boring and I can't believe I'm even saying that like that just sounds like such a bougie problem <laughs> and um I stopped going but I was still paying I'm I am still paying like they don't let you out of that contract um and so I looked up and I had four months of credits, as they call them, ready. And so now I just called yesterday and I booked my appointment for a facial, a massage, and a back facial. So I'm so looking forward to celebrating my birthday holiday with my four credits that I have been like pre-planning. Didn't know it. I guess saving up for, but slowly every month was paying for um, and that's going to be my birthday tree. And that way it'll just be me and the masseuse. And I love it because they book me back to back to back. So from 10, I got one treatment. 11, I got another treatment. 12, I got, so I'm going to be there from 10 to 1, just getting loved on and rubbed on and detoxified this weekend. That's how I'm celebrating my holiday. And I love it because it is part of self-care. It's part of what Thomas J. Leonard, the founder of Life Coaching, teaches, which is to have these practices. Like he has a list in the back of one of his books that asks you specifically for the name of your masseuse, the name of your chiropractor, the name of your doctor, the name of your reflexologist, the name of your pharmacist. Like you have to make sure that you're checking all of these little things off of your list. So mine started last weekend pre-celebration after our coaching clinic i went to the reflexologist like this is a person that just sits and rub on your feet and i paid for an hour of this man's time to just rub on my legs and my feet to get the circulation because every it's little spots in the bottom of your feet that mean certain things that are connected to certain organs and you got to make sure all the things are circulating I felt like a million bucks when I left. I also went to um, one of our malls here. They have what's called a B12 store where you can go get vitamin shots instead of 
ingesting the vitamins in a pill form where your body has to digest and break them down. Um, I went and got the shot because it goes right to your bloodstream. So I got B12, which gives you more energy and it helps you sleep better. And I've been sleeping like clockwork these last two days. Like my body shuts down right around nine o'clock and I'm up at like seven, ready to go. I might not know what to do with my day because I ain't used to being up that early, but I was up. And then I got D3. Um, that's something that my doctor, who is a um, holistic doctor, teaches. Like, not just prescription medicine, but, you know, we're going to do some vitamins. And so she's like, because we, especially as black people, we're not getting out and standing in the sun long enough for our bodies. We have to take our vitamins. Um, and so D3 was one that she recommended long story i bought a lot of vitamins from kroger too recently they had a sale so i'm looking forward to those because they're for energy and heart health and um immunity immune system so i'm big on staying up on that like i would rather know that i'm i'm preventative care like that's me like i want to prevent getting something um and my grandmother was the same way like randomly she would just select a grandchild come in take some of this castor oil you know so we're preventing diseases over here and and taking care of our bodies the best way we can so that's how I started the holiday season and knowing that my coaching company paid for all of this. And I talked to my accountant last week and he told me that this is considered my health care. So he's helping me categorize these expenses to see which ones are right offable, if you will. So that's my tip, like prep, because I knew that this is the type of life I wanted to live and I knew I wanted my business to pay for it. And it, and it literally is. So that's my tip for coaches. You know, as you write the vision, like we talked about last weekend in the um, training, write the vision for where you want to be this time next year. When you go into coaching full time, when this is your main income, like include you as those expenses and making sure that, you know, yeah, you want to be there for other people and give them good gifts and help take care of them. But you got to look out for you, too. So. I have a whole like decompressing routine after my events where some of y'all know about it from my live training days. I'll go and um, eat a bowl of soup right afterwards to kind of get my voice, my throat warm, and then I'll rest. And um, yeah, I added some stuff to it with the shots and things like that recently. And then I ordered something called Liquid IV from Amazon. It just came yesterday. So I took some of that last night. But all of this is for energy and, and restorative health, preventative health, and it's all a part of my coaching plan. I never would have known, but my coach did. So I'm so thankful that he introduced us to this world of self-care so that you can show up because um, I, I want to be there for you guys when we do events and when you're asking for my help. I want to be there to serve knowing that I've been poured into as well. So. That was a lot, but this is how I start the celebration process. Um, holidays are just another day to me because it's just me, single, no kids. So I buy what I want, when I want. I don't have to wait on a certain day of the year. I am that blessed, and so are you as a coach. Um, we get to decide how much money we make, how much rest we get, what gifts we buy that make us happy, even if it's this little that I ain't even... I'm working on it. Um... And so I just thank God for that. I thank God for that. Um, and I did have some invitations to like hang out with friends or go to different places. But this year I said, you know what? I choose me. I don't want the stress of like somebody invited me to um, another city, like an Airbnb experience. Sounds good in theory. But in my mind, I'm an introvert. So I instantly went into I got to clean the house. I got to cut my hair. I got to shave my whole entire body to make sure I'm just comfortable when I leave. I don't want about looking at my legs like, girl, what's been going on? I got to pack. I got to drive. I got to get gas. I got to get an oil change. I, gotta, I just started going down my list. And I was like, you know what? Thank you for the invitation. However, I choose my peace. I choose me. And me wants to be in my bed, comfortable, hairy legs and everything. Coming and going as I please and wean on nobody else's mm -hmm. schedule. And I'm celebrating me for the holiday season and for my birthday. But I appreciate knowing that there's love out there, you know, the saying, we're thinking about you this holiday season. So I'm so proud of me because that, that's a part of my healing journey, which I have been focused on all year, healing and getting to the next level because I'm bringing y'all with me. So whatever you dealing with, sis, any of y'all watching this, Whatever it looks like, whatever it feel like, when you make the plan for it to get better, it gets better. You got to work that plan. You got to write the vision. And you got to work the vision. Work your faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So 
So even way before this, when times were terrible, stuff I can't believe I made it through with the help of God, I knew that it could not always be like that. So I thank God that I'm here because this is what healing looks like. And it's a feeling too. It's a Healing is such a feeling. Um, I talked to a childhood friend recently and they were like, wow, like if that worked for you, like, cause they knew what I've been through. They're like, okay, tell me what to do. And two of them actually. One of them said, whatever you say to do, I'm going to go do it. Because, Lord, looking at your life the last couple years, man, I need to get on board. And that's why I say, you know, even when I'm out and about here in the ghetto city of Atlanta, the ghetto Hollywood of the South, you're going to meet some fellow ghetto nistas and you got to contain yourself and allow your spirit to shine and don't let the enemy win because <laughs> he will try or as a Oh, Pastor used to say, don't let the devil use you. Um, and so I have to keep all that in mind and just stay in a peaceful state of mind. And that only comes because I'm doing the work to heal behind the scenes. So just be encouraged this holiday season. Don't let them family members drive you crazy. Um, so we've had so many funerals, child. My family don't do get-togethers like they used to back in the day. Even if they did, I wouldn't come. Because we're not on the same page. But they know I love them and I'm here for them and all that good stuff. So I just keep all of that in mind. But yeah, I've seen like the video skits of, you know, the family gatherings and what's to come and the gossip and the blah. And then I'm vegan and nobody wants to cook for me. So I can go buy my own food and go to my own house. I love y'all family. Thank y'all. Mm-hmm. Fellow get ghetto nistas, I would. Uh, we we got other names, but um, Bougetto, all that, all that. So hopefully that helped, Alex. I went on a rant, but this is coffee chat. So what else y'all want to talk about? People looking at me like, who is she talking to? Um, let's see. Scrolling back, I'm scrolling back. Oh, you must have been talking about the door frame of the igloos. They're actually regular size doors, Alexis. <laughs> so I needed a value. <laughs> That's another thing, um, mental health. Um, and thank you for the happy early birthday wishes. Let me see. Let's see. I was just going back to y'all old comments to make sure I didn't miss nobody. What is a book coach? Oh, Char Charlorita, we're saying we chatted. I have chatted with so many people, and I do not um, remember everything. But, you know, I try to ask y'all what we talked about. Then I can remember. So forgive me if I ask, have we talked? Are you a coach? Because <laughs> I talked to a lot of people, thank God. Saying nope, not in my place. There, are, there are for sure. But, oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, I didn't know. Um, so yeah, mental health. Um, you mentioned you know needing a Valium. So when I moved about, it's been about eight months now. I found myself. It felt like a two week process. It may not have been that long. I don't know, but I was just in this place where just this cloud like this eeyore cloud was just hanging and all of a sudden i found myself sleeping more and just like i would get up eat use the bathroom go back to sleep get up eat use the bathroom go back to sleep i'm like now i know i just moved and part of it i am tired however the whole day i just knew something was off and then um i went to the doctor and she asked how you feel are you experiencing anxiety? Like she asked me, and she's a black woman, which I appreciate. Cause I feel like I told her, I was like, and she's a nurse as well. She's a nurse practitioner, but she's a holistic nurse practitioner. And she's like, she's the person who deals with me. Cause none of my stuff is serious enough for a doctor. Like I've been through the doctor eval and they're like, everything you got, a nurse can handle. And the nurse ended up taking over my whole doctor's practice. Like her name is on the door now. And I'm so proud of her, like a black woman. So she takes really good care of me. I feel so loved and cared for. And she's just like, how you doing? You know, so she ended up 
sharing um some prescription i don't even remember what it was but it was <clears throat> when i read it it's like mild tranquilizer it was for anxiety i've experienced anxiety we don't know to call it anxiety as black people like that's not a common term used in a black household black community that i'm from i'm gonna speak for my hood i don't know about y'all but i have been experiencing anxiety and panic attacks and then a friend of mine I talked to from childhood, she too, she goes to the emergency room when she has hers because she can't breathe. She's just going into straight panic. And we had so many conversations during um, the pandemic about this. And I realized it was the daily stress of life. Plus everything that's going on in and out of the church, in and out of the home, in and out of work and business. In her case, in and out of dealing with baby daddies and ex-husbands and stuff child it was just so much and we're just so used to taking on so much um that our bodies start working against us that's what it felt like and so i went through the full set of prescriptions and then i could not get my doctor on the phone to write me another one i was like i don't like how this feels i feel like i may have become dependent on that prescription even though i would take a little half a pill just to mellow out but i didn't like it um when my mom passed and the divorce, the divorce happened on the same day, my other doctor had put me on um, an antidepressant, but I did not like how it made me feel. So I fought my way out of that too. So I have this inner person, I call her higher self. Um, and she's there. I met her top of 2020 when I had to do an MRI. And it feels like if you're claustrophobic, I was not claustrophobic until I seen this machine <laughs> and I cried and it took my higher self stepping in like close your eyes breathe pray and talk to god you got this let these people do their job and after that i have not been the same i met higher self again top of this year when i had a lot of projects due and she helped me to rest my way up to working through all these projects found myself at three in the morning getting everything done and the next day, I told my neighbor about higher self. And so now when she checks on me, she's like, how are you in higher self? Because higher self is who I am um, when I don't slip back into my comfort zone. So higher self has been within me fighting like, nope, we don't need medications like that. If you need it to help get you through a season, do what you got to do. But we're going to work you back up to you because I'm so anti. I don't want to sit and be drugged up. I never want to be taken out of my natural state. Um, but anxiety is real. Panic attacks are real. Now that I know a name for it, trauma, um, ancestral trauma is real. So I've worked my way through all of that. The home that I live in now that I watched be renovated, that was the beginning of a new healing journey. And so now me and my neighbors um, have named our homes. And I told them my house is called the healing house. I just feel it every time I go home. Like after dealing with the world i am so happy to walk through my house doors it's home you know it's not just a place to live i don't have roommates i don't have to share my space it's just me and i get to decorate and i get to clean and i decide the scent of the candle or the carpet freshener or the little plug-in the glade plug-in or the incense that i burn so all of this is a part of healing i also hired a coach that's helping me through healing and trauma and all it takes with being a black woman on earth. I told our coaches this weekend, we are a minority of a minority of a minority of a minority of a minority. We are black, we are women, we are Christian, we're entrepreneurs, and then insert whoever you serve right there because you're a minority in that space as well. So we have so much. And again, this is just me. So I can't even imagine people with kids and husband and taking care of loved ones, old and young and you know so one thing I know I think that triggered it for me earlier this year when I moved was that for a whole week because I was moving excuse me I had got out of my routine of taking my vitamins and so yeah you know if I'm not getting everything that my body was used to getting to keep me on track then it was like boom we're gonna shut you down <laughs> and so in order to get out of it and I'm meeting more and more people that are having that experience and I'm like listen this is what I did. So all I remember was like, I remember Tony um, Robbins saying how you just got to change your state. So if that's like, get up, take a shower, put on some your lotion, your favorite fragrance, brush your teeth, comb your hair, put on some makeup, 
Put on a cute outfit or something that makes you comfortable. Go read a book. Go listen to music. Dance. Hug yourself. Um, everything but take a nap for me because naps are like, we're going to keep you in this bed. Um, so I turned on some Bishop T.D. Jakes and I went in my closet and I started cleaning and giving away stuff, like cleaning out stuff that I wasn't wearing. And then you know how you get to start cleaning then all of a sudden, <laughs> your whole house is like, this looks good. And I really have this personal spiritual belief that when I clean my space, the Holy Spirit can flow. It's just like so clean and so open and so fresh and fragrant. I did it yesterday. I usually clean hard and deep when it's a lot on my mind, when I'm thinking through something. So I did that yesterday because I was processing just where I am and being proud of myself on this healing journey and saying no to things and setting boundaries and not repeating the same behaviors that got me negative results in my past, you know, and listening to podcasts of people who have done the same thing and watching videos of other women around the world who are saying a day in the life or come clean with me, like stuff like that. Even watching episodes of Hoarders, you know, it'll make you want to get up and clean and change the state. So I keep all of that in mind because life coaching, we, we are in the alternative mental health space, but we have to, as coaches and as clients, because we're supposed to have coaches as well, clients should be able to get themselves to a certain point. And then coaches, you lock arms and you walk together from there. That's my personal experience. That's my personal belief. So I have to do that work for me. So when I show up for my coaches, I'm not this ball of mess that they got to unwind. I'm like, yeah, no, I've already prayed through that. I'm healing through that. I've taken the time to read about that and even see how I can serve my community better because if I'm dealing with it as a black woman because we have so many shared experiences that's what we laughed about on Saturday in the coaching clinic like we all have our hot comb stories or our double dutch stories or our in my case I stayed on punishment a lot so punishment stories what that looks like in a black household not talking outside your family most of us didn't go to therapy as kids because we don't believe you know we were taught and raised you better not speak outside of this house I'm not crazy so I don't have to go to counseling all the things that black people have in common, you know? And so um, I just felt like if I have thought through this during my growth process, and many of you guys are just coming on board and you're new to coaching and you're like, how do I deal with coaching and helping other people? So I get this in the form of questions from you guys. Like, how can I be a coach when my life isn't together? Child, if you wait on your life to be together, you ain't gonna never coach nobody. But if you do like what I did years ago, and I told God, Lord, I promise that as you help me heal, I promise I'm going to help others. I promise that I'm going to help us heal our way through life. And that's what life coaching has done for me, introducing me to self-care, alternative mental health, um, wellness, spiritual wholeness, and just a deeper understanding of the God who lives in me. That's really higher self. Because the Bible teaches us when we get saved, God lives in us. But have you really ever experienced the God that lives in you? I have met him several times recently. And my mind has been blown. And I have not been able to talk about it. Because everybody's not there. And so this is stuff that I'm living out. <clears throat> but I'm also being introduced to higher circles. Of people who are like, oh, if you think that's something, let me show you this. And so I'm just quietly over here, you know. You see me, I'm smiling and I'm glowing and I'm online and offline and I show up and I take a break and then I show up. It's me just relaxing into this new level because there are higher levels. And I'm excited because, like I mentioned, many of you guys will be joining me on these higher levels. Um, it starts with financially investing in yourself, but it's so much bigger than that. Like coffee today and my coffee mug was courtesy of one of my higher level coaches. How blessed she is. And she is a black woman Christian coach. She put, I don't know how much was on this gift card. She put in our group of a couple thousand people, here's a Starbucks gift card. Go treat yourself. Hey, Zachary. And I'm like, you ain't worried about nobody like stealing this, overusing it, sharing it with other. She's like, here, we're women of integrity. I trust God. He's my provider. I put some money on this Starbucks card, no matter who you are, where you are in the world. A couple thousand people. Here's one Starbucks gift card. Scan it at the register until the money's gone. 
I said, if that ain't abundance, who you know doing that? Who you know setting that standard? Those are the types of people that I've been introduced to, that I now hang around, that are now my coaches and in my circle, teaching me how to think bigger. Oh, that's nothing. That's a tax write-off as a gift to you guys. Went from 40 people to 400 people to 40,000 people on her email list and said, hey, you want to come speak to my 40,000 new new coach? And I'm looking like, who, who, me? I'm new here. Really? And we've been in talks about doing, like, just expanding. That's beyond poverty mindset that I'm used to seeing here in Atlanta, online, in my little country hometown of Douglasville. Just, just, oh, it's a whole new world, as Ariel said. So, yes, healing coaches are very important. Trauma-informed coaches, we talked about that Saturday. They're very important. People who are familiar with what trauma and abuse and toxicity looks like and can help you heal your way through it. And then like you're doing now, Alexis, telling your story. Um, and one of my coaches, Coach Eric, had to help me see that. He's like, you tell your story so much, you just breathe through it, you go so fast, you got to slow down. So I'm learning how to breathe through my story and let y'all process the emotions because <laughs> I'm healing through it, you know. So yes, ancestral trauma, trauma-informed all the things like my mind, like my brain is warm and tingly talking about it. But all of that journey started for me at the top of this year, just seeing the different areas of coaching and being able to kind of pick and choose. So like I have a marketing coach, a planning coach, a spiritual Christian coach, um, my webinar coach, I have a healing coach, and then I'm about to have, um, a $10 million life coach, sales coach. Like she is super specific to who she helps make money. And I'm so excited about that because they, she talks about, like I listen to her, I listen to at least two of her podcasts every day um, for the last few months. Like that's been my homework to myself going through her episodes of her podcast. This is my second time doing it. Just like I've read the Bible twice. Like I want to get this, get this. You feel me? And so, um, to hear her talk about money like it's water. Like, yeah, we spent $60,000 on this villa for my wedding and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I would do it again. And talk about having a custom-made car and driving it like it's a regular car. She's like, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, we're getting there, you know, like water for chocolate, you know. So, yes, trauma coach, healing coach, a coach that prays. Oh, my God. My Christian coach, I didn't even know I needed her. But I knew when her ads on Facebook spoke to me because she had black people in it and talked about Jesus. I was like, let me see. And I followed her and I did some work with her as far as um, she was doing something, some type of Bible. I don't know. I signed up. I bought what she was selling. And then when she opened the doors to come work with her closer, did it without even no hesitation. Um, and it was so, I know it was a God thing because when she made her offer, I was also um, closing up a boot camp that I did. And the first payment that came through, I sent it right over to her. I was like, Psh, you know what they call first seeds or first, first seeds. I think that's what they call it in church. I don't know. But anyway, sold that first seed, signed up to work with her for a year. And um, she prays. And I was like, that's why I joined your circle. She literally has a uh, part of her coaching called the war room. So, you know, when you show up on these calls, you're getting prayed for, you're praying for somebody, you're praying with your fellow sisters. Some of our coaches are from that camp because we're all black women of faith with online ministries. Um, she also prophesied. So she prophesied over our business. When I say, when I show up and tell y'all, there are people that are praying for you. There are people that are praying with you that you don't even know. God got people just lined up. There are angels that walk among us. There are people who they ain't even saved or in the church, but they hear the vision for black women of faith becoming certified life coaches and the work we get to do together. And they like, I want a part of this. And here's how I'm going to sew into you. It's either financially with a check or a grant or a course. I've been given so many scholarships and courses just to back my vision to help you guys, to help me bring this vision higher for you guys. So 
partnerships unexpected i did a live with a lady in jamaica a couple weekends ago and she's like yeah when you come to jamaica and i was like oh now i got an invitation to jamaica a reason to travel like yes i'm there and she owns real estate in jamaica so she's like you know come on like it's just another level it is another level. and i love that these are christian conversations these are business conversations. These are conversations with women, black, white, Korean, Russian. These are all the cultures of my coaches. And I love it. And this is stuff that we don't know to look for. But when you're praying and you're staying in God with the vision that you say he's giving you for your business, he will make your name great in the earth. He will help you reach the four corners of the world without you having to leave your home. We didn't know that's what that meant when we were taught that in church coming up, right? Like, God, ain't, Jesus ain't coming back until the gospel is preached in all the world. Child, we global, global, you know? And I love it, and I'm so thankful for it, and I'm embracing it. And so I just take my time and sit with it because this is a whole new experience for me. You know, this is new money, new thoughts, new conversations. And I'm like, how can I take just 1% of that and introduce it to my coaches? And if that looks like me just having to pick up the phone and say, hey, coach, how you doing today? Or me sending you a message. Hey, girl, I'm checking in on you. That's me giving back. That's what one of the coaches asked me on Saturday. How do I um, this like do I volunteer? My volunteering now looks like me giving my time with you guys because I charge six hundred dollars an hour at the time of this recording. That price is going up and people do pay that under contract faithfully, <laughs> consistently. Um, and that opportunity to have my time is not open to everybody. So when I pick up my phone and hit video chat or pick up the phone and call or pick up the phone and text or pick up the phone and send a um, messenger message to say, checking in on you, how's business? What do you need? How can I serve? That's my volunteering. That's my seed being sown. sown. That's my give back. And it don't cost you a thing. So now when I show up on camera with you guys doing the end of the year retreat or our trainings throughout the year, I serve. So I didn't care about our training this weekend being four hours and going for six. I would have went with eight. I was like, I wish we would have set more time because now that I am being poured into properly and there's so many higher levels to come, I can serve you guys. I can be here for you. So Coach Brenda on our call this weekend said, I love your customer service. Customer service is one of my spiritual gifts. I've been in customer service 30 plus years. Um, and I love it that it's being recognized, but sitting, listening, answering questions, pointing to resources, you know, making sure that you get to the bottom of what you showed up to this call to get. That's my sweet spot. And she's like, nobody's doing this. I'm like me. I am. I'm setting the example of what's possible. And again, that's because I, too, am being poured into in the right way to serve as a leader but in a way that looks so much different than we were taught to believe leadership looked and i'm thankful for that so i appreciate y'all for being part of the journey and showing up and i see you when you read my messages and send the inboxes and show up on the lives and send the emails and the texts and um you know just want to show up i had a client from a year ago it just randomly called out the blue, just to say, how you doing? Like, I miss you. <laughs> like, that right there. That's what I want. But we didn't talk because that wasn't a part of my, that wasn't on my calendar. So they didn't go through the proper protocol. But I love that I get to choose how my calendar goes, how my day goes. And my time is respected and honored in the form of money and in the form of respect. If I just call you out the blue, you know it's because I love you. If I just check in on you. It's because I see something in you and I believe in you. And I'm like, come on, girl, just get to the other side. You know, it's so much better. <laughs> it gets better. Hang in there. So thank y'all for asking, you know, about my day, about my journey, you know, telling me what you want to learn about because we can talk about it. We can heal through it together. That's my promise to God. That's my mandate here on earth to do what I can for you as I can. I'm only able to do so much though, so. I put it out there. Let's thank you for pointing to us and for checking in. Girl, I do. And I love y'all. All of y'all think I just check on y'all. I almost took a screenshot of all the little uh, Facebook inbox bubble heads that were popped up. I'm responding to one, swiping down, responding to another, swiping down. 
Because I'm like, everybody, and I love that. People have told me that for years. Like, I always feel like it's just me and you. And I'm like, girl, I got 23 conversations <laughs> going at one time. But I love that y'all believe, like, oh, it's just, it's just me and you. I know you're talking to other people, but it's just me and you. And that's what Coach Carla said at the end of our uh, training this weekend. By the way, it's available for replay for $97 if you want it. I'm going to put it in the vault soon, though, so that we can move on to other things. Hello, Trini Packer. Um, but, yeah, Coach Carla, it was eight of us, nine of us on the call this weekend. And she's like, yeah, the other ladies were here, but I know you were just, it was just really me and you. <laughs> and I was like, I love that. I love that you guys feel that. That's what this is about. Knowing that you are supported and you got a safe space to just be, to share, um, and to be just supported. Allow yourself to be supported. Yes, yes, yes. Let me go back through. Okay, I got to look up the podcast you mentioned, Alexis. Black women, Christian, and mental health. It's okay. I feel like I'm getting that culture. I'm so sorry to type this. Not, not okay, cool. I think I'm caught up. So I'm going to go find lunch. I still don't know. I don't want to eat. I think I feel like rice today. Maybe I'll get Chinese food. Yeah, Coach Carla is a whole mess. <laughs> we laughed and talked. Um, and uh, yeah, she came in. We had also had a sponsor from um, our Christian Life Coach group that was like, uh, and she also inspired the idea for this weekend's workshop. We talked. I just picked up the phone and called her. And we talked and talked, and then she ended up sending a message and said, she said, well, I can't make the event this weekend, but I want to support someone who can make it. And she sowed a seed to help someone else come. So just to think, like, this is what giving and offerings are being made, seeds are being sown, look like. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just excited. I had no idea. That this is what this would look like, but it's a beautiful thing. I really need to clean out my car. I guess I'll do it at some point. <coughs> yeah, we had a great time. <coughs> we recorded it, so if you want it, let me know. Because I'm doing that as our Black Friday deal for $97. These co The coaches there paid 200 to be there. So in the spirit of holiday season, Black Friday, keeping the seed sowing going, I'm offering it um, for the next few days for $97. <coughs> Any other questions? Anything else you want to talk about? There's a store here that I may ride past, duck in for about an hour. It's a um, Amazon return store. I've been there four times in the last week. But you have to have time to look through all the stuff. Hello, Latrice. Any final questions for our coffee chat? I'm just people watching now. Atlanta is so interesting. I'm sure every place is interesting, but Atlanta is interesting. <laughs> Uh-oh, any other coffee chat topics before I go? Appreciate y'all for being here. Um, but yeah, this weekend's workshop, the replay is available for a limited time and I'm going to take it down and uh, we're going to move on we got some fun stuff coming up cool it's right at an hour so get back to work Alexis I hope you have a great day at work remember there's someone somewhere they are waiting on you to walk in your destiny coach so they can walk into theirs because it's when you let your own light shine you give others permission to do the same and when you impact one life even if that one life is yours you impact generations i'm dr aj austin if you didn't know it watching this long i will be back at some very soon points with an actual outline that we'll talk about how to become a professionally trained skilled qualified certified black woman life coach i'll see y'all soon have a great day
Bye, coaches.